Hey, Bob Nation voice of the Boss Mark Johnson here. Coming up this week in the Buffalo Stampede, we're talking plenty of basketball. Thoughts great Shelly Sheets will join us. We'll also talk with Tad Boyle. Buffs getting ready for the Cal Golden Bears on Thursday night. We're talking with athletic director Rick George. And what a moment. Get the tissue ready when Coach Prime meets Peggy Copper. All this week on the Buffalo Stampede. It's a game winner, Kendall Weta with a three-pointer. That gave the bus the victory as they knocked off another ranked opponent, number eight, UCLA, at the event center at that time to remain undefeated, in fact, in Boulder. Hi, everybody. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Welcome into the Buffalo Stampede television show. As you can see, it's cold out. We're coming to you from Corelli's right here Monday nights from 7 until 8 o'clock for Buffs Primetime with Tad Boyle, J.R. Payne, and always a player guest as well. As we're talking women's basketball right off the top here. What a win for the Buffs as they take care of the Bruins. And we had a chance to talk with the GOAT, one of the greatest of all time to play Colorado women's basketball, Shelly Sheets here at Corelli's. Presented by Coors Light. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshment, made to chill, celebrate responsibly. I got to give you guys a little little inside of baseball with, with her. So when we brought her on two years ago, one year ago, when you started doing women's games? Uh, last year, last year, conference tournament, uh, conference uh, play started. Yeah, when conference play started, she was doing her first, first games. And she called me a couple of times and, and said, hey, I'm, I'm trying to figure this broadcasting thing out. You know, give me some advice. And so I, I said, well, you know, here's one thing to think about. And here's what you're you're trying to do as the analyst. Um, but about the second time I told her, I said, you're really good at this. I mean, she is brilliant. Not many people uh, play the game at a high level like she did. And then they all understand it, but they can't articulate it. And, and she does a phenomenal job of that. And so I was trying to get her to do more, and then she decided to jump on JR staff. It's not what you do that for. You're really good at this broadcasting thing. And, and so you get to deal with the, the big name we call them kids at our age. Um, you get to deal with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I know that's one thing you've always loved. I do. I, I love our players. We, we have a great squad, great personalities. Um, just try to be there to, to take a lot of the, you know, the, the everyday stuff off the coaches' plates and then just really to serve the players and, and really – JR and T do a phenomenal job with this program, so not much I have to do with the players other than just encourage them and just kind of guide them just a little bit. Um, obviously, we split this weekend, so we're going to come back and try to flush the weekend and start fresh on Tuesday. You know, anybody that played at a very high level like you did, uh, I love asking this question. Or sometimes do you watch what a player does and you think, why Why would you do that? <laughs> why, why can't you see what I saw? Does that ever happen? Or uh, from a coaching standpoint over the years, have you kind of evolved where – you just kind of, you know, say, well, that's what the player sees, so i got to help them through it. Yeah, you know, you, they don't want to hear what I did. <laughs> right. That was 31 years ago. I was a freshman funny. playing and bouncing the ball around. But now you just made everybody here feel old. Yeah, so, yeah I turned 50 in August, so I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm seasoned. We're all seasoned. It's all, all right. good. Uh, yeah. No, I y sure you do. I mean, that's human nature to think, oh, man, I would have done it this way. But when you're talking and articulate to the player, you just really kind of, get an idea of what they see, how they feel, and then just really try to guide them. You, they Trust me, players today do not want to hear what you did back in the day or how you did it. Just, right. You just try to guide them um, because every player is different on our team and and players are different today even um, with the game. So I just try to be there as a mentor. Yeah. Help them through. A little advice. I'm a little advice to the, you know, I'm a little biased to the point guards, you know, <laughs> Jay, Jay and Weta. So I'm like, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> I don't think that have been. Well, you can't take us back this weekend. You get this play. You get the great win oh, over great. a top 15 team at UCLA. Yeah. Drop the one to USC. Kind of what's your takeaway from the weekend? Uh, you know what? We had a great crowd on Friday. It was yes. super. And we shot the ball really well. We played well. We had four uh, four players in double figures. Uh, Quay is leading us. You know, she had another double double. Yep. Um, Jalen. I uh, got into the 400 assist club, so welcome, Jay, well, welcome Jay to the club. That's a small group, by the way. Small group, but uh, <laughs> but no, well, we welcome her with open arms. Is there a secret handshake now that you with her now that she's part of the club? Or? Trust me, I'm not that cool. <laughs> I'm not that cool to have a handshake. I'm like, you know, I'm a high-fiver. I'm a high-fiver. I just keep an eye. 
Um, but we th that game was so tight with, with, with UCLA, and they came in here upset because we swept the LA schools for the first time in a long time last year. There was 15 lead changes. There was like, like 13 ties in that game, so it was back and forth, back and forth at overtime, and um, and our girl Weta hit hit the game winner in I'm overtime. Bad, by the way. Paying for her bench. I tell you what, the bench. She, she said she was surprised that she got her number called with us. Yeah, you know, I, I guarantee you, you know a lot of people didn't think that Weta was going to be the one shooting the you know the the last shot in the game. But I tell you what, she's put in some work, and uh, it didn't surprise any of us that that ball went in. Yeah, this team's got a little bit of that that magic touch right now, doesn't it? We do. You know, the, the first team meeting back in August, uh, I stood up. I don't say a lot to the, to the team, um, but I raised my hand and T's like, she's, why are you raising your hand? And I'm like, well, I, have some, I have like something to say. <laughs> so, it's not class. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I just really talked to the team about how this team is, is a lot like the 93 team, which was our first ever Elite 18. And I was like, listen, whoa, whoa, time out. We're not, I'm not saying we're an Elite Eight team. That's not what I'm saying. I said, we just have a lot of pieces of that puzzle like the 93 team did. And, you know, we have good shooters. We have some post game. We have some good guards. And, and we have some depth. And so uh, I said, the one missing piece with this team is, is that mentality. You know, that 93 team was like, who's next? Right. Just to squash, it on. squash them like a bug and move yeah. on. And uh, we, we, we've, learned, we've learned so much from our wins and our losses. Uh, and I, I think T and Jared do a phenomenal job. Um, we have Mondays off, so we come back Tuesday. We we do highs and lows from both games, and then, and we just flush it. We we do such a great job of flushing from the weekend, and then boom, we hit the court on Tuesday. We're next next team up. So the Colorado women get the split with the LA schools. They swept them, by the way, on the road against the LA schools in Los Angeles. Come home, beat UCLA, and a losing to USC, their first home loss this season. Next up, Colorado women still in the top 25 on their way now to play the Oregon schools coming up this week in the Great Northwest. Coming up next here in the Buffalo Stampede, as we continue with Corelli's after Buffs Prime Time, we're going to talk with the head coach of the men's team, Tad Boyle. in the paint. Help oh, ball knocked away and Cavanaugh's got the steal. They try to get it to Richardson. De Silva up court. Caught by Neek. Slams with the right hand. Holy cow, is that impressive. And Colorado's down by 7. 57 to 50. And Julian Hammond fakes, drives in the paint, bounces inside. Caught by Lawson. Goes to the door. Goes up and slams with two hands. And a foul called by a back way to potential three point. Well, there's some highlights as the Buffaloes get swept on the road against the Oregon schools. Both very competitive ball games, but Colorado comes up short against the Ducks and Eugene and Corvallis against the Beavers. Back in the Buffalo Stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. We're out here Monday nights at Corelli's for bus prime time, and we had a chance to talk with head coach Tad Boyle about the losses to the Ducks and Beavers. Powered by Ford, cars, trucks, and SUVs built for America. Built Ford proud. Ended up dropping two this weekend against the Oregon schools. I don't know, you know, both of them I think were competitive in large part. But which kind of your assessment? Well, I mean, games? Mark, we're we're right there in yeah. every game. I mean, huh. we really are. I, I, when I think about the team, you know, we haven't been blown out all year. I mean, UCLA really didn't end up being close down the stretch, but it was a free throw. It was there was, yeah. but I mean, I'm telling you, we've been right there in every game. We're, you know, there's some teams that are they figure out how to win games, and uh, unfortunately, right now, we're one of those teams that's figured out how to lose games, and. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that, and we're we're figuring out uh, almost I don't know about every way, but a lot of different ways. You know, yeah. whether it's taking care of the ball, and rebounding, and shooting, and you know, uh, the list goes on. But uh, what I what I want our players to understand, and I talked to them about this today, is is we're not that far away. But uh, you know, we just and I'm not a huge tennis fan, but you know, the Australian Open just you know finished up, and and uh, you know, tennis is one of those games where it's usually won by the, the 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 player that makes the fewest amount of mistakes. Doesn't hit in the net. Doesn't hit it out of bounds. And, and really, basketball uh, can be that way as well. Uh, and right now, we're that team that is making too many mistakes and self-inflicted mistakes, unforced errors, if you will. And uh, you know, I looked at the Oregon State film, and and you know, they scored 60 points on us, and really 25 of those 60 we gave them. I literally gave them the points, mm -hmm. whether it's fouling them in the backcourt, reaching, silly fouls, not boxing out, not guarding the ball against a driver, um, two, two ball screen defenses that broke down that were very simple coverages. And so not there's not one of those things that cost us that ball game, but when you put them all together, sure. it costs us a ball game. And so 
what I want our players to understand is we got to control what we can control, which is the scouting report, understanding that, our focus, our intensity, our effort. We can't always control whether that ball goes in or not. Um, and really, right now, I'm not sure we can control whether we take care of it or not. But even with that, we can still figure out how to win games, but we're not doing it because it's a combination of things. And it's, I, I wish I could sit here and say, well, it's this player. He's really not doing yeah. it. This player's not doing it. Well, it's collective. It's not just one guy. It's the whole team. So, anyway. When, when you say the, there are a myriad of reasons, you know, it'd be one thing if uh, you said, you know what, we are the worst rebounding team. We can't figure it right. out. Right. Exactly. And that's hurting us right now. We're losing ball games. Yep. Is it is it better or worse when it's a myriad of things you're looking at? Well, I mean, it gives you hope because you can you a lot of the things that we're doing we can control. You know, for example, you mentioned rebounding. You know, when we played Oregon and Oregon State in Boulder uh, two or three weeks ago, our defensive rebounding percentage in both games was over 80 percent, which is where we want it to be. If you are 80 percent. A defensive rebounding percentage, you are a better than average and could be considered an elite rebounding team. Explain for, for folks so they understand what defensive rebound So really what that means is if there's 10 shots that go up, okay, that Oregon State takes 10 shots and you box out and you get uh, a rebound and limit them to just one shot, eight out of 10 times, uh, your defensive rebounding is 80%. If you, if you only do that seven times, it's 70%. So um, in Boulder, it was well over 80%. We, we limited those, those teams to one shot, and that's why our defensive numbers were so good because our, our rebounding is a part of defense. That's why I say rebounding and defense, not rebounding or defense, because defensive rebounding finishes the possession. Well, that, those numbers were you know 66% against Oregon State in Corvallis, and it's 82% in Boulder. Well, we control that. We control whether we box out or not. You know, we we do. We control whether we get the rebound or not. I mean, because that's just effort and toughness and and grit. And uh, sometimes the ball bounces your way. That's why it's not a hundred percent. You don't say, "Well, we got to get a hundred percent of the rebounds," because you know sometimes ball on the rebound or something. Rebound, and yeah. you know the the ball just doesn't bounce your way. But by and large, if you're doing your job, and, and if we're doing our job, we want to be eighty percent or higher. That's our goal. And we were in Boulder, but we weren't in Corvallis, and we weren't in Eugene. Well, there's head coach of the Buffalo's Tad Boyle as we continue at Corelli's here on the Buffalo Stampede. We're out here Mondays from 7 until 8 o'clock for Buffs Primetime. Come on out and join us on Monday night. Always great food, obviously, at Corelli's and always good basketball talk as well. And we talked to the head coach, Tad Boyle. They get ready now to host the Bay Area Schools Thursday night against Cal. That's a late one at 8 o'clock at the event center. And then on Sunday, they've got the Stanford Cardinal. Coming up next here to Buffalo Stampede, it's part four of our four part conversation with athletic director Rick George. Well, there are some great highlights of the second of two indoor track meets for the Colorado Track Field Program here at the University of Colorado. Now, again, we told you before, but the Buffs will not have an outdoor meet this year because the track is being resurfaced for the Pac-12 Championships coming up in 2024. Back in a stampede, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. We promised part four of our four-part conversation with Athletic Director Rick George. We're talking all things Buff Club and all things Deion Sanders with a new football coach in town. How you doing? Great, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Taylor. Taylor, oh. We're so excited to have you. Have a seat. Awesome, thank you so much, I appreciate it. So I hear that something's been weighing on your soul. Yeah. Tell me what's got you scared of Ralphie. Ralphie's a buffalo. I'm loyal. Let's start right there. I spent a lot of time with her. <laughs> I'm scared. I like, I, I, okay. yeah, we gotta, we gotta meet. You gotta arrange oh, a absolutely. meeting so we could. 100%. Talk we'll do a meeting. Out, chat it up. She'll love you. Yeah, so we could meet at a disclosed location. Sure. But you gotta, you know, tell her a little bit about me. So okay. she'll, she, you know. We've already told her all about she you. She understands how I move and how I get down. No. Well, there's a burgeoning relationship building between Coach Prime and Ralphie, I think. There's Taylor Stratton. She's a program manager for Ralphie. Meeting with Coach Prime, trying to get him to understand what Ralphie's all about. Back on Ralphie's rundown with Rick. We continue with the athletic director. Here at the Buffs Team Store, by the way, in the Champion Center. This is where you come to get. Right here, your prime gear. Look at the model we've got here today. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, look, I'm, you talk about Ralphie and Taylor yeah. and all that yeah. and Coach Prime. I can't wait to see Snoop Dogg run out with them. <laughs> I mean, because I'm, I'm understanding that's going to happen. Co Coach said it was going to happen. So right. uh, we're, we're expecting that deal. But uh, the new prime gear around here, which is everywhere. Well, it's just flying off the shelf. So yeah. I'm glad I was able to get one today <laughs> um, and put it on. But, uh, yeah, it's it's really uh, great to have these jerseys and Coach Prime. and. Yep. 
Um, you know, it's a lot of fun to see this flying off the shelves. So, you know, in regards to his relationship with Ralphie, when you had that initial meeting with Coach Brian we talked about, you didn't have a maybe a descriptor as to what Ralphie was all about? So oh, yeah. Well, well, we talked about Ralphie. Okay. And we talked about that she's a female. Right. And right. and we talked about the fact that you're going to have to run quick to keep up with her. <laughs> but beyond that, we really didn't talk about, okay. uh, that much about it. He was a little concerned that he had to run out ahead of Ralphie, but I'm glad Taylor explained to him, no, no, you follow Ralphie out of the Thunder suit. That's right. Yeah. You know, hey, one thing we talk about in college athletics right now, uh, the NIL and the importance of that. And, and all the excitement with what Coach Prime has brought to the program, it's awful important right now for Buff Nation. Yeah, it, it really is. And the, the NIL collective that the Buffs for Life created, uh, and the Buffs for Life is an organization that really supports uh, former student athletes that are in need, mm -hmm. that um, uh, need some help with different things. And so this is really a collaboration. They, they came to us and said, hey, we'd like to create this collective. It'll benefit former student athletes, but importantly, it'll benefit our current student athletes in all sports. Certainly in football, we, you know, in, in all of our sports, it's a priority. Uh, Buffs for Life NIL Collective is really important part of that. Uh, we still have a NIL exchange uh, that's really working well for our student athletes. So that's an area that we've just got to continue to uh, support. Yeah, important to point out the Bus for Life Collective, as Rick alludes to, part of your donation there goes to help former buffs who are struggling with things, and then a good chunk of it obviously going to the student athletes as well. You, you mentioned the the exchange. That, that's important, I think, for businesses out there to understand what that's all about. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a way for businesses to have some of our student athletes endorse and you know uh, provide uh, social media uh, tweets and clicks and all right. the different things that go on. I don't know all that stuff, but <laughs> the student athletes do, and, and um, you know having businesses on there that you know student athletes can support uh, in a lot of ways and help grow their business, um, that's a really important part of our NIL initiative as you, well. You know, the other thing we need to talk about is, is the Buff Club aspect of this and, and the, the dollars that are coming in for the university. You can talk to that as well. Well, look, the, the, the Buff Club is really important. You know, we need, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where we need support in all those areas, right? Mm -hmm. And the Buff Club is really the, the, the mechanism that allows us to do a lot of the things that allows us to create the programs for our student athletes to build these incredible facilities. And, you know, when you donate you get priority points and priority yep. points are going to be important important as you want to change locations around so you know we're encouraging people to support you know both the buffs nil collective the buffs for life nil collective and to support the buff club because we do need your support well and you understand it's supply and demand and right now the demand is going through the roof. Yeah, the demand is going through yeah. the roof, and um, you know, ticket sales are going to be incredibly great. We will sell out of season tickets sometime in the summer, and um, it's going to be a great fall. And uh, you know, we still got a lot of work to do this winter and this spring with all of our other sports. But I'm excited about what's ahead. Well, we always like doing Ralphie's rundown with Rick. Little did he know when we started today, he was going to have costume changes throughout the show. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> Get your prime gear here at the Buffs Team Store. He's the athletic director, Rick George. Well, there's part four of our Fort Worth conversation with Athletic Director Rick George. Coming up next year in Bubble to Stampede, we've got a great moment when Coach Prime met a Colorado icon. This is just the intro. We can, we want it. How many games do we want to win, Coach D? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Coach Sims, but the guys like to call me Coach Mo. But the thing I'm most you know, looking forward to is just being able to help people's uh, body change, you know, help their, their mental state change, their mentality, and, and just helping guys being able to perform uh, at a better rate. My philosophy is, is to help student athletes be able to perform at an optimal level. More pressure, crank it up. That's mentally and physically. Get all the way up. Get to the block and get all the way up. Our pillars are smart, fast, tough, disciplined with character, so everything is in line. We're going to train smart in here. We're going to train guys to be tough. We're going to train you to be fast. Discipline is key. A lot of good teams lose because they aren't disciplined. So we're doing everything right in here. We're going to all be dressed in the same uniform. Um, and we're going to instill discipline, no, no jumping off sides, and just test guys and mentally to make sure they're doing the right things. And again, that character piece, we're trying to develop young men into adults. Ain't nothing wrong with a little grunt, man. Nothing wrong with it. The thought was to come here and dominate. Uh, the thought was to change the culture. Think what Coach Prime was able to do at Jackson State. 
sky's the limit on where he's going to be able to take this program. Well, there we can look at our brand new strength coach here at the University of Colorado. Coach Prime putting together a great staff. That's Coach Mo. He'll be working with the guys through the offseason. In the weight room, back at the Stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. It was a huge recruiting weekend for Coach Prime and the entire staff this past weekend at the University of Colorado. But Coach Prime did take a few minutes to meet an icon here at the University of Colorado as Prime finally met one of the twins, Peggy Coppin. Well, I, I want you to meet this young man right here. Oh. How you doing? Uh, well, Mark, I, I'm Peggy. Peggy, how you doing? Are you Prime? That's what they call you. Do me. I call you that or? No, no, they call me anything yeah. you want. You good. <laughs> oh, well, how about good looking? There you go. That'll do? Like okay. <laughs> what do you want to I say? I want a big hug again. Oh, you got that, Peggy. <laughs> Oh, good to see you. Good to Thank see you. you. I heard some wonderful oh, things about that. you. You're all dolled up and see you stuff. Mm -hmm. Boy, you fit this house just fine. Yeah. Well, this is to show you my twin. My, okay. And we were known as the CU twins. So that's what this is. But I just want you to know I had a twin. That's, that's why we, uh, we got known as the CU twins. Anyway, we were inducted into the legacy wing of the Hall of Fame. Awesome. And that my, was made for that. And you, could, you, don't, you can have one of those if you want it, because I have extra ones. But you, you've got enough to do. I'm 98 years old now. Uh, maybe you told me. Mm -hmm. You're looking good, Mom. <laughs> well, I can still, thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to know, your, would like to have known your mom. Is she still living? Yes, she, matter of fact, she would be here in a couple weeks. She's just waiting for me to get my home. Well, I set want up. to meet your mother. Well, trust me, you. she she is a, a, a lot of fun. Oh, well, I bet she yeah. is, and she did a good job with you. Well, thank you so much. When they announced on TV that they thought you were going to be here, and then they finally said you were, and all that, and... I sent Rick a, a mass card. We're Catholics. I sent him a mass card to, for <laughs> prayer, prayers. So when that happened, I called him on the phone, and I said, God answered our prayers. When you, <laughs> well, and, uh, thank so you. Thank that's you. That's exactly what I said to him. And well, that, he, he and answered I my it. prayers, too, when, when, when he sent me here. You know what we need to do? When we have the spring game, we need to bring you down on the field for the well, kickoff. You do <laughs> because you said you, you 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 have a problem seeing from way back there, but we got to bring you out so you okay. so we can acknowledge you properly. Oh my gosh, you need to no, do no, that. No, no, I would love that. Okay, be honest with me. You started crying during that, didn't you? Huh? I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. There's Coach Prime and Peggy Coffin. What a moment that was when Dion got the meet. One of the icons here at the University of Colorado. I'm voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Don't forget men's basketball coming up on Thursday night. we got the Cal Golden Bears coming to town. We'll hit the year at 7.30 on the Colorado Basketball Network. Buffs and Bears will tip it off at 8 o'clock. Thanks for joining us as Rock Corrales Bus Private Dive every Monday from 7 until 8. We're out here. We'll talk to you next time here on the Stampede.